Welcome back everyone, Dan Vega here, Spring Developer Advocate at VMware. And today we're gonna to talk about one of the best ways to learn Spring, and that is through the Spring Guides. Now the Spring Guides are not new, they've always been there. If you head over to spring.io and go under the Learn section, there's a link for the guides. Now the guides, these are anywhere from like 15 to 30 minute tutorials that teach you how to do a particular thing. So if you wanna build a REST service, if you wanna validate input, if you wanna schedule a task, there is a guide for that. The guide is really great. It has instructions on how to get through that particular task. It has a Git repo that's backed with it and you can just follow the instructions and learn that particular thing. And this is how I learned Spring. You can start to string together all these concepts and then build out an actual app with them. So the guides are not new, but what is new, what I wanna to cover today is now that Spring Academy is here. Spring Academy is going to power these and allow you to run them in the cloud. Now, why would you wanna do that? Well, all of these guides, you clone a repo on your local machine and you work on your local machine. What if there is an external dependency? So if I wanna learn how to um, do messaging with RabbitMQ, I need to set RabbitMQ up on my local machine. And if there are a couple of these things that I need to do, that may be a little bit of a deterrent for me to go through that guide. Well, now with Spring Academy, we can run these in the cloud. So I'm gonna walk you through this, how to find them over on spring.io, how to find them on Spring Academy. And I think this is a really great addition. You don't need any tools. You can run this right in the browser and learn one of these concepts in a short period of time. So with that, we're gonna head over to the browser and we're gonna walk through a guide together. All right, so here we are on spring.io. Uh, as I said, the guides are not new. If you go up to the learn section and go under guides, you see a whole bunch of different guides. So guides are for whatever you're building, these guides are designed to get you productive as quickly as possible using the latest Spring project releases and techniques as recommended by the Spring team. So this is really great. The Spring team is contributing to these guides. They're staying up to date with the latest tech and I really enjoy these. So as you go down here, you can kind of search through the guides to look for something in particular. Again, these are designed to be completed in 15 to 30 minutes, and you can find a, a variety of topics here. So if I wanted to build a REST service, I can come in here and walk through the REST service. Uh, it'll talk to you about what you need to build, um, basically some getting started information, how to complete this guide, here you can use the Spring Initializer if you wanna start there and not actually clone the repo. And then it walks through the steps of building out a REST service. So this is really great. Um, as I said though, what happens in a scenario where you need an external dependency? So I'm gonna pick this one here, which is messaging with RabbitMQ. If you go into this, you will see uh, what you need to build. And under there, one of the important things is you need to set up the RabbitMQ server. So you have to set up uh, the RabbitMQ broker. And to do that, you would need to do a couple things. You need to brew install RabbitMQ. Uh, if, there's, uh, if this is Windows, you could have a different uh, install uh, path. And then you need to go through and set some things up to make this happen. Again, with this particular one, maybe that's not a big deal, but if it's if messaging is new to you, if RabbitMQ is brand new to you, uh, sometimes like doing this setup can be a deterrent, and, and we don't want this to be a deterrent to you. So if you notice on the right, you can get the repo, but also you can work in the cloud, complete this guide in the cloud using Spring Academy. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna head over to Spring Academy. If you do not have a account, on Spring Academy, you can get one for completely free. There is a paid version, but again, no credit card needed to get your free version. And there's a lot of really great free content here. Um, so if you go, and I'm just gonna open this up in a new link here. If you go sign up for an account and go under guides, you'll see all the guides that are available to work in the cloud because not all of them are available. Like if you go to uh, scheduling tasks, there's no uh, work in the cloud. Now we are working on getting all of these migrated over to Spring Academy, but until then, um, this is a really good place to kind of see which ones are available. So once you have opened it up in uh, Spring Academy, we can do a little bit of a walkthrough here. So we're gonna, we're gonna walk through this one together, messaging with RabbitMQ. This guide walks you through the process of setting up a RabbitMQ AMQP server that publishes and subscribes to messages and creates a Spring Boot application to interact with that server. 
You will build an application that publishes a message to using Spring AMQP's Rabbit template and subscribe to the message on Apojo by using the message listener. So in this scenario, there is both a subscribe and a listener. Um, and so we're going we're gonna to walk through those. So once you're ready, you can go ahead and start the lab. And so what this is going to do is open up in uh, Spring Academy's platform here, which is kind of in the browser. And again, this is great. I don't have to install anything on my local machine. I can get up and running uh, really quickly here. So build tool conflicts are uh, detected in the workspace. Which one would you like to use? So it looks like we have, um, if we go under complete, uh, I have both Graden, Gradle and Maven. Uh, so that's good. So you have to pick one of those. All right, so let's get started. Number one, messaging with RabbitMQ. So we already talked about what it is, what you'll build. How do we create a RabbitMQ message receiver? With any message-based application, you need to create a receiver that responds to published messages. The following listing from complete source main uh, Java, receiver.java shows you how to do so. So here's the code for that. If you wanted to jump in there, you can. You can go to, and I believe they're working on a way to automatically jump to this file. I thought I saw this in one of the demos, so excuse me if I'm getting, if I'm missing something there. So here's our receiver. Um, we're gonna receive a message. The receiver is a POJO that defines a method for receiving messages. When you want to register it to receive messages, you can name it anything you want. Uh, for convenience, this POJO also has a countdown latch. This lets it signal that the message has been received. This is something you are not likely to implement in a production application. So um, here's the receive message, uh, and this is a component. All right, and so just to make a note, if you wanted to follow along, you could easily go into the initial uh, folder here in the project and write these out yourself. Just to keep this a little bit more concise, we're going to just walk through the completed section and see if we can run the example. So uh, after you have that uh, receiver in place, next you need to register the listener and send a message. So with uh, Spring AMQP's Rabbit template provides you everything you need to send and receive messages with RabbitMQ. This is great. This is the template abstraction. We've seen it before with things like REST template, JDBC template. Now there is a Rabbit template for sending and receiving messages. That's not something we have to worry about. So what we need to do is configure a message listener container, declare the queue, the exchange, and then bind the, uh, and then how to bind between them and then configure a component to send some messages to the test listener. So you're gonna use the rabbit template to send a message and you will register a receiver with the message listener to uh, receive the message. So what we're gonna do is we would do this in, um, so in this case, this is uh, doing it right in the Spring Boot application. So if I come over here and take a look at this, you can see that it's here. And um, there's usually a walkthrough. Yes, so let's see what this walkthrough says. So right at the top, um, Spring Boot application is a convenience annotation that adds all of the following. This is good to know. Uh, first, it adds a configuration annotation. This is what says, hey, this is a source of bean definitions. So when we define beans here, we can do so because it's under the Spring applica Boot application annotation that includes configuration. So this is going to pick up beans. Enable auto configuration, which tells Spring Boot to start adding beans based on the class path settings. And then component scan says, hey, go ahead and look for components, configuration services, etc." The main method uses Spring Boot's uh, Spring Application Run method to launch an application. Uh, so this is 100% Java, no XML. That's great. The bean defined in listener adapter. So let's see, we have Q exchange binding. Um, we have this container. We have this listener adapter. Uh, this method is registered as a message listener in the container defined in the context. So we say we get in a receiver. So that's the one class that we already looked at, which is a component. Uh, so that is made available to Spring in the application context. It knows about it. So it'll receive it as an argument here. And then it says, hey, this is a new message listener adapter. We're gonna take that receiver class and we're gonna have a default listener method of receive message. So there's a receive message method in there. 
All right. Um, it listens for messages on the Spring Boot queue. Because the receiver is a POJO, it needs to be wrapped in a message listener adapter. So that's good. So we're learning how to build these types of applications with some really great explanations here of how to do it. The message listener container and receiver beans are all you need to listen for messages. To send a message, you also need a RabbitMQ template. So um, it talks about the queue, that's great. Uh, in this case, we use a topic exchange. Cool, now how do I send a message? So in this sample, test messages are sent using a command line runner. So that is right here, runner. And a command line runner is just a functional interface in Spring. It allows you, it's a really good place to kind of bootstrap some information, whether it's uh, put some information in the database, or in this case, uh, I wanna do something after the application is running and the application context is available. So to do that, we implement the command line runner. And to do that, you need to override one method, the run method. So here it is, and it says, notice the template routes, the messages to exchange with a routing key of foo.bar.baz, which matches the binding. So we have our rabbit template, our receiver, we say sending a message, and we're going to send this out on the topic exchange. And then there's a routing key of foo.bar.baz, and the object is hello from rabbitmq. So cool. Um, now what's really exciting here is all the infrastructure for this particular application is set up and ready to go. So if we want to run the application, we can click over here and go into this terminal. And we could say, I'm going to CD into complete. And all I'm going to do is run Gradle W boot run. And let's see if this starts up. And so again, this is going to start up our Spring Boot application, but our dependency of RabbitMQ uh, message broker is in place. We didn't have to go ahead and install it. So it just makes running a, um, a guide or an example for the first time uh, much easier. So here we are. Um, so we started. No active profile, created a connection to RabbitMQ, great. Here is that message from the council uh, from here, so sending message. So we could see that the message was sending um, and then waiting, workers, cool, finish, stopped. Um, oh, sorry, right after that we have the received message, hello from RabbitMQ. So this is really great. This allowed us to walk through one of these guides that had a dependency. And quite frankly, even if it doesn't have a dependency, this is an environment that is always going to be reproducible. And I can go ahead and show this off. If I was doing a meetup or a conference or a video for YouTube, uh, I really like running through these guides because we know what the environment's going to be. And then we have uh, our our guide on the left side, and our environment on the right side. So I don't have to leave the browser. Uh, I really like this approach. So hats off to the Spring Academy team for pulling these guides in here, allowing us to run them in the cloud uh, side by side. Uh, I'm a big fan of this, and I can't wait to see more of these guides uh, converted over to Spring Academy. Uh, we're going to be talking a lot more about Spring Academy in the future. I want to go through and show some of the features here. We did a recent episode of Spring Office Hours on Spring Academy with our friend Felipe from the Spring Academy team. And uh, that was really interesting. So I'll go ahead and leave a link to that in the description below. But yeah, I have some fun things coming with Spring Academy. I'm going to get certified in the new year. You should too. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about what that process is. Uh, and yeah, so I'm looking forward to that and uh, looking forward to going through a lot of the content on Spring Academy and sharing that with you guys. So, hey, if you found value in this, friends, do me a big favor. Leave me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. And as always, happy coding, friends.